The Israeli military continued its air and ground offensive on the Gaza Strip on Monday, with troops edging closer to the region's densely populated urban center. Now, seven Palestinians were killed during a series of tank shellings and airstrikes. Now, these include two women and two children. Gaza medical officials now say the death toll has risen to more than 900. Palestinian witnesses say Israeli attacks intensified after midnight on Sunday, telling local radio stations that Israeli tanks and warplanes struck houses in many parts of Gaza in the early hours of Monday. Meanwhile, the Israeli military has warned residents in Rafah to leave that area as it prepares for another round of airstrikes. The Israeli Prime Minister has expressed a wholehearted desire for an end to the conflict in Gaza. But Ehud Olmert is also demanding a decisive end to Hamas rocket fire. Meanwhile, as we mentioned earlier, Israeli troops have made another move, taking them even closer to the Gaza Strip's densely populated urban center on Monday. Wang Guan takes a closer look. Israeli bombardment of the Gaza Strip continued for a 17th day. Israel says the violent confrontation with Hamas can only end when two preconditions are met. We want the firing at Israeli citizens to end once and for all. We want the residents of Sterot, Beersheba and Netivot to live in peace, exactly the same way as the people in Paris, Marseille, London and New York and other places. Also on Monday, opposition leader Benjamin Netanyahu visited the hospital in the southern city of Ashdod, where rockets earlier hit an empty kindergarten and playground. He was asked whether upcoming Israeli elections should be postponed. No, I don't think they should be postponed. I think that would give the Hamas a tremendous victory. Uh, they would hold the Israeli democracy hostage. Israel has now begun sending reserve units into Gaza to assist thousands of ground forces already in the region. Hamas, for its part, has showed no signs of ending rocket fire either. Wang Guan, CCTV. On Monday saw the Israeli military continue its policy of stopping fire for three hours every day. Now this is to allow residents to leave their homes and stock up on vital supplies. Li Chung with more on this. This is the fifth time in recent days Israel has suspended its offensive to allow aid groups to help with the humanitarian effort. Residents rushed into the streets to stock up on essential materials, and medics used the break to rescue casualties in areas of fighting. But for some of the residents, the brief respite is not enough to make a difference. One or two hours is not enough, but even if they give us quiet, it is not quiet. There are shellings, incursions, and hits. There is nothing new for us because nothing has changed. Israel announced a pause in its offensive last week to allow food and fuel to reach besieged Palestinians. Hamas said it would respect the firing pause from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. local time. Volunteer Egyptian doctors have also started work in Gaza to help their Palestinian colleagues deal with the mounting toll of deaths and injuries. Inspired by the scenes of suffering in Gaza, the doctors struggled past Egyptian authorities and Israeli air raids to give practical and moral support to Gaza's own overworked and undersupplied surgeons. The UN and other aid organizations have warned of a possible collapse of Gaza's health services if the conflict continues and hospitals are not fully resupplied. Li Chong, CCTV. A plane carrying humanitarian aid headed ultimately for Gaza left Venezuela for Egypt on Sunday. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez said on his weekly broadcast show that offering aid is the very least his country can do. The plane is carrying 12 and a half metric tons of medicine which Egypt will transport to residents in Gaza. Chavez has strongly condemned the Israeli offensive, expelling Israel's ambassador to Venezuela just last week in protest at Israeli air and ground strikes. Meanwhile, Venezuela's foreign minister is urging the UN to force Israel into a ceasefire and to withdraw its troops immediately. He also called for a, quote, comprehensive agreement that gives back to the Palestinian people their right to land and the construction of an independent and sovereign state.